welcome back to Measure and Mix. Today I have compiled a video of my top 15 favorite farmhouse thrifted or trash to treasure DIYs for you guys. There is timestamps listed down below in the description box, so check that out if you want to skip around. Um, you may have missed some of these if you are already subscribed to my channel. If you are new here, this is a great place to start. Make sure before you leave to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any new DIYs. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna be using this big pig I got from Goodwill a while back and it was only $5.99. I actually got this a couple years ago. Um, right here I'm showing you it did have um, hooks in it, but I unscrewed those a long time ago going to do something with them but I never did so now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill the holes with some wood glue because I didn't have any wood filler and wood glue dries fine so that you can sand it and that is what I did and then I am coming back with my white linen chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and I'm gonna give this two coats of white paint Next, I wanted this pig to have a cute saying on it. So I went on to Pinterest and I found some inspiration there. I found a picture of a pig that was similar to this one. Um, actually, it was selling on Etsy for around $35 to $40. And it said farm to table on it. So I thought I would copy that saying and write that on my pig. So I just drew it out in pencil, freehanded it. And then I came back with my Sharpie paint pen and outlined it in the black. And guys, I can't believe how easy this was to do, but how long it took me to actually go and do this. Because like I said, I've had this sitting in my house for a couple years now and I just never got around to making it over and I'm so glad that I did today because I love how it turned out and it's so cute sitting on my countertop. This next item was not actually thrifted. It's a popcorn tin. You can get them thrifted. However, I purchased this for my mom a couple years ago as a Christmas gift, and she kept the tin and gave it back to me and told me to do something with it. So I'm gonna give it a galvanized look with this aluminum, metallic aluminum spray paint and this matte hammered spray paint by Rust-Oleum. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of me spray painting the tin, but um, all I did was go over it with the metallic aluminum spray paint all over and while it was still wet came back and spritzed it just a little bit with the matte hammered spray paint and then came back and spritzed it again with the um, metallic aluminum and just kept layering it until I got the look that I wanted and I did this for a cake stand um, from Dollar Tree that I made a while back and I will link that video so you guys can have reference if you want to know um, then what I did after it was all dry is I took my gel stain that I use for everything because it never runs out and I just gave the top and the bottom of this tin a rust look with that. Now I am coming back with my stencil. Um, I got this stencil from Amazon a while back and I just traced the letters and numbers with a piece of white chalk because that is all that would show up on this tin and then I came back with my white linen chalk paint and just went over it two times to cover it well. Now I'm coming back with my uh, nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I just cut two pieces for handles on each side and hot glued those down. And I love how this turned out. I think it is so cute and very farmhouse and perfect to add to my living room. thrifted item was actually bought recently by my mom and she purchased it for $1.99. She was seeing all these wheelbarrows around and she thought I could do something with it. So I went ahead and removed the apples and the vine with just um, some needle nose pliers. I just untwisted it and popped those out. 
Next, I took this sign from Dollar Tree that I got a few months ago that's just been lying around my house, and I popped the cow, pig, and chicken off of it, and then I just uh, separated the cow, pig, and chicken, and then I sanded and trimmed the tops of each one of these where they were connected, and then set them aside to use later. Next, I am painting the wheelbarrow with some white linen chalk paint, and I just painted the whole thing, the inside, the bottom, all around, and I did also paint the wheel on both sides and the front with the white linen chalk paint, but you can see now that I'm coming back with some black acrylic paint and just painting it black, and then I also painted the little detail on the one side there where it it looks like the wagon wheel is connected to the wagon. I like the wheel painted black better because now I think it stands out more because I am going to go ahead and hot glue the cow to one side and then the pig and the chicken to the other side of the wheelbarrow. And I think this turned out so adorable. I just put some of the baby's breath or gypso, I think is what it's called from Dollar Tree in it. And this is, I think, my favorite thing I have done so far. Um, so thanks mom for finding this wheelbarrow. I chose to make over this window and I got it from the Habitat for Humanity store for only $10 and I saw on Pinterest where they were taking these old windows and turning them into coffee tables so I thought I would try to give that a shot with this window I really wanted windows with panes in them but I couldn't find one that was wood at that Habitat for Humanity store so I thought this one would work perfect though I love how it looks it was really dirty so the first thing that I did was take some bleach spray and just wipe all of the outer edges off and then I took some glass cleaner and cleaned the glass really well. Next I used my white linen chalk paint by Rust-Oleum and painted the window frame. I painted the front side with two coats and then the back side of course that took about three coats to cover up all of that brown paint. So as you can see, I didn't end up using painter's tape to tape off the glass because I couldn't find it, um, but that was okay because after the paint was all dry on the frame, I just went back and took some of the glass cleaner and a paper towel and just wiped the edges on the glass and the paint came right off. Okay, now that the window is all prepped, I need to build a box for the window to sit on top of. So I ended up using two one inch by six inch by eight foot boards, and I cut them into four pieces, and the size of those pieces are gonna depend on the size of your window frame. But I ended up taking the long piece, and then one of the shorter pieces, and I showed you here how I uh, put them together, and then I just took my nail gun and nailed those edges in. Once I got the two small pieces done, I just came back and did the other long piece, and I made a rectangle. Next, I took a two by four and cut two pieces from it that were the width of my box. Then I just went ahead and nailed those two by fours into the outer edges of my box, making sure that the bottom of the two by four was flush with the bottom of the box. And I just used my nail gun for this, but you could use screws and a drill or a hammer and nails, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I love my nail gun. It's really saved me a lot of time with wood working projects so it's come in handy. Next I took two one inch by four inch by eight foot boards and I cut six pieces out that were the length of my box and then I just used my nail gun again and nailed those six pieces in on each side to those two by fours. Now I'm just going to take my sander and I am just going to give this a really good sanding making sure I get all of those raw edges from where I cut the wood off and just kind of rounding the corners of the box. 
Next, I got these leg plates from Amazon, and these are what my legs of my table are going to screw into. And I just took them and screwed them into all four corners of the bottom side of my rectangle. I also purchased some legs from Amazon. They are nine inch wooden legs, and as you can see, they have the screw at the top of them, so I just screwed them in to the plate. You just wanna make sure that your plate that you get and your screw on your leg are the same size, so they screw in easily. And that was it for the box. Now all I needed to do was paint it, so I took that same white linen chalk paint and I gave this a couple coats of paint. After the paint was all dry, I have these hinges that I just got from the hardware store. There is two in a pack, and I'm just gonna use three of them, and they are two and a half inch hinges, and I just screwed them to the top of one of the sides of the table. Then I'm gonna take my window, and I propped it up on a storage box to help me out, and I'm gonna take the other side of the hinge, and I'm just gonna screw that side in to the bottom of the window and then that is all there is to it I absolutely love how this window turned out I can't believe the top of it was once just an old dirty window I'm going to be using two of these 1.5 liter wine bottles. They're a little bit bigger than the normal 750 milliliter wine bottles, um, but these are what I had, and instead of them going to the recycle bin, I'm going to go ahead and use them for this project. So the first thing I did was just remove the labels from the wine bottles um, and the glue and wash the wine bottles out with a little bit of soap and hot water. Next, I just picked up this drill bit from the hardware store. It drills into glass and ceramic and other various materials. And I asked my husband to help out with this part. He did the drilling um, and he drilled one hole in each of the bottles at the bottom of each of the bottles. And then I poured water on to the drill bit in the bottle um, where he was drilling to keep the glass uh, lubricated and cool while he was uh, drilling into the glass so it wouldn't crack. We started at an angle um, and then we turned the bottle and went downward with the drill bit. And it worked out really well. Um, there was no cracks or anything like that. So if you haven't guessed yet what I'm making, I am turning these wine bottles into lamps. So I just have two lamp wiring kits that I bought off of Amazon. They were pretty inexpensive and you can turn any bottle into a lamp with this kit. So it's specifically for that. I'm not gonna go over how I wired it just because there are directions and it's really simple to do if you follow those. And to finish the lamps off, I'm just using two of these lampshades that are brand new I got from a garage sale for a dollar a piece. For the next makeover, I am using this old planter that's been sitting in my garage for years. It has spider webs and the bottom is rotten out. It's just really gross and I have just needed to throw it away for a long time, but I'm glad I didn't because I'm gonna be using it for this project. So the first thing I did was wash it all out just with some water um, from the hose. And then I brought it inside after it was dry and I cut 
three pieces of scrap wood that I had to fit in the bottom of the planter um, just to replace those rotted pieces that were on the bottom. And I just nailed those in with my nail gun. Then I got out the white chalk paint and gave the whole thing um, just one coat of white chalk paint and I did the inside and outside. After the paint was all dry, I took these casters that I just picked up from the store and I flipped the piece over and then on all four corners, I just drilled the casters into the bottom of the planter. Next, I just took a scrap piece of plywood that I had and I cut that into a 12 by 12 inch square to fit on the top of the planter. And then I had this piece of seat foam cushion for a long time, so I decided to use it and cut that into a 12 by 12 inch square to fit on top of the plywood. And I just glued it down with some spray adhesive. Then I took this drop cloth stenciled rug that I made last year on my channel. You can find the link in the description box if you wanna take a look at that. But I'm not using it as a rug anymore, so I decided to repurpose it to cover this little seat cushion. So I just lined up one of the medallions that was stenciled onto the canvas and cut the excess of fabric off, but making sure I left enough fabric around the outer edges to wrap around the bottom of the seat cushion to cover it. After the fabric was all cut to size, I just flipped everything over and I just started pulling the fabric up and stapling it to the plywood. Um, I don't really cover things, so I probably didn't do this the right way, but I did it the best way that I know how. After it was all stapled down into place, I just cut the excess fabric and flipped the cushion back over on top of the planter box, and I think this turned out so cute. You could use it inside or outside. So for this last trash to treasure makeover, it was really simple and it's actually not trash. I swiped these from my husband's stash. He does home brewing. These are one gallon jugs that he had for his home brewing and they have just been sitting around collecting dust. He hasn't used them. So I decided that I would put them to good use in my home decor. So what I did was just take some twine and wrap it around the bottom of each one of the jugs. So I just hot glued it to the bottom and then wrapped it around about 14 times, hot glued the end and cut off the excess string and that was it. So if he does want to use this in the future, he still can, but I have a really cute piece of home decor and I just put a few cotton stems in there and I love how it looks. This first DIY came to me while I was eating this pizza that came out of this box. So this pizza box um, I think came from Walmart. It had a thin crust flatbread pizza in it. I'm just cutting off the side so it's all even and setting it aside. And now I'm going to take two of these one gallon paint stir sticks that I just had in my stash. You could use uh, whatever you have, popsicle sticks or um, regular wood, whatever works that you have lying around. And I'm just gonna cut off the little indented part on the top of each of these stirred sticks to make them just a straight pieces. Uh, once I got those cut off, I'm gonna take one of the paint sticks and I'm gonna cut it in half. So it measures 17 and a half inches once you cut off that little um, curved part. So I cut the two pieces at eight and three quarters inches long. Now I'm gonna take those cut pieces and hot glue them to each side of the box on the inside and then hot glue the longer piece to the top um, of the cut pieces. So that way it makes a handle. So I'm kind of making like an old school toolbox kind of deal here. And then I just gave this two coats of some cream colored chalk paint 
um, that I had in my stash. I'm all out of white chalk paint at the moment. I'm waiting for a delivery. So the cream color is what I have, but I actually like how it turned out. Um, and then once it's all dry, I just came back with some twine and hot glued it to the middle of the handle and started wrapping it around and just hot glued um, the end and secured it down so that a section of the handle just has the twine just to give it a little bit more interest and that was it I just decorated it with some things that I already had around my house and I just think this makes a cute little farmhouse piece without spending any money and using what you have For this next DIY, I'm going to be using a cereal box. You could use whatever type of cardboard you have lying around your home. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cut off a piece of this cereal box, one side of it. And I am going to draw out the letter Z because my last name starts with a Z. So I am going to do that. Originally, I was going to do four letters and spell out the word home and do something a little bit different. Um, with these letters, but it took me a little bit to box in the letters, so um, like you'll see here in a minute. So it took me about a half an hour to finish a letter, just one letter. So I didn't have time, unfortunately, to do all four letters. So that's why I just went with my last initial. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the cereal box and cut a piece off to use as the sides to box this Z in. Um, and then you see here that I cut like little tabs off the cereal box and hot glued those down to the Z. And then the other part of the tab I used to hot glue to the sides that I am putting on the Z. Um, I just did this all the way around the Z so that way it was all boxed in. Next, I'm just going to take my cream color chalk paint and give this a couple coats of chalk paint and let it dry. Now from here, you could really um, do anything with this. You could flip it over and cover the whole front of it with some moss and have yourself a moss letter. Um, but I decided to go with kind of what I saw off of Pinterest. This is where I was inspired to do this from um, and put some flowers inside of my letter. So I just filled it up with some Spanish moss that I had and then I just started filling it up with some flowers that I had on hand from Dollar Tree. Um, I started off with some peonies and then some pink hydrangeas and some cream colored roses. A lot of these flowers were from older projects that I had done, so I just picked those apart and added them to this one. Uh, and then I took some lace ribbon from Dollar Tree and hot glued it to the back of my letter uh, for a little hanger. And then I also tied a little uh, bow and hot glued that to the top of the ribbon. Um, um, just to add a little bit more interest and I think this turned out really pretty and perfect for spring and it didn't cost me anything I'm going to use these little mushroom cans. Um, they're about half the size of a regular can. I just took the paper off of them. I used the hair dryer just to loosen the glue. Um, and then I used a piece of sandpaper to sand off the stamped um, numbers that were on it. And then also just to give the cans a light coat of sanding. Um, so that way I could kind of galvanize them and rust them. So I'm going to do that by just adding 
with some vinegar, um, pouring that over top of the cans inside a container. And then I took a white towel, make sure it's a towel that you don't care about. Um, and then I'm just gonna wipe the cans and then place the um, damp towel uh, soaked vine in vinegar over top of the cans. Then I let it sit overnight and once I uncovered the cans, this is what I was left with. It was a galvanized rustic look. Um, so I really like how it turned out and I wanted it to be kind of rusty and old and weathered looking. And now what I'm gonna do is take some of these wooden beads um, I got these off of Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I just hot glued three of them to the bottom of each one of the cans, and then I stained them with a little bit of dark walnut stain. Um, and then I let those completely dry. And then that was it. I just filled mine up with some Spanish moss and some uh, little succulents that I had left over from a project from Dollar Tree. Um, and I think these make really cute little flower pots. You could even put plant some real herbs in them if you wanted to. I love how they turned out. For this DIY, I'm using a regular size green bean can. I use the same vinegar method on this can as I did on the mushroom cans to make it look rustic and galvanized. Um, and I'm gonna use this pie plate that I had lying around and never use to put on top of the can to make it a cake stand. So I just added some E6000 and some hot glue on top of the can and glued the cake plate to it. And I think it turned out really cute. I'm going to use this Simply Lemonade jug. I just cleaned it out and took all of the stickers off of it. And now what I'm going to do is just take my little um, engraving heat tool. What is it called? I don't even remember what it's called now. Um, but anyways, I'm going to take that tool that heats up and I'm going to melt the plastic around the top to take off the little lip where the lid um, for the container goes. And then I did cut like a little slit in the bottom because I was planning on making a water watering can um, out of this but I couldn't figure out what to use as the spout so I don't know maybe you guys can figure that out um, if you want to make a watering can but after I cut that all off I just used a piece of sandpaper and sanded down the edges um, so they wouldn't be so rough then I just mixed some of this aqua acrylic paint with some of my cream colored chalk paint and some moss colored chalk paint um, together to get kind of a more blue green color that I liked that matched my home a little bit better um, maybe a little more turquoisey uh, and then I just painted two coats of paint onto this and then I had this matte clear um, spray paint to protect it and I just spray painted it uh, then once it was dry, I forgot that I wanted to add some um, rust colored look onto this. So I used my dark walnut stain and just added it over top of that, which it worked out fine. And I wiped the excess off. Then lastly, I had this bunch of tulips from Dollar Tree in my house. So I added that to the container and this turned out to be a cute little spring vase. And how the wind makes way across the field. Take a breath. The thing I'm going to be making over is this large picture that I got at Goodwill for $5.99. I loved that it had a wood frame around it and the inside had a uh, wainscoting paneling look and I thought that I could turn this into a really awesome farmhouse sign. The first thing I did was take some sandpaper and sand down the frame. It really didn't look like it had any um, polyurethane on it or like any type of stain on it already. It was kind of just old and had an orangey color to it. So I wanted to cover that orange color up. So after I sanded it, I took some of my Briar Smoke stain and stained the um, whole 
frame and then I kind of just wiped it down so it gave it more of the look that I was going for in my home. Next I just painted the picture with some white linen chalk paint by Rust-Oleum. This took about three coats of paint to cover up that dark picture that was on there. After the white paint was all dry, I just came back and took a pencil and freehanded the word homemade onto the middle of the board. I just used a level and drew a line from one side of the board to the other and that's how I wrote my word so that way it would be straight and even. I didn't show this part because when I looked back at the video clips, you could not see it at all. <laughs> so I um, am just gonna show you how I am tracing out the word homemade with my Sharpie paint pen. And then I came back and erased the pencil markings and just touched up the paint where I needed to. Lastly, I just took some of the black poster letters from Dollar Tree to spell out pies, sweets, and cakes. This took me a couple tries to get the letters all lined up, but these are really easy to stick down. And that was it. I had a really cute farmhouse sign that was perfect for my kitchen. The next thing I'm going to be making over is this shutter that I got from the Habitat for Humanity store for $5. It's like one big shutter with two smaller shutters hinged together. So what I'm going to do is actually take those hinges off and I'm going to save the hinges for my next project. Um, but then that's going to leave me with two smaller shutters. So that way I just don't have one big shutter. And then there was also like an extra piece of wood on one of the shutters probably to attach it to wherever it needed to be attached to. And I just removed that as well. So these shutters were really dirty and gross. They had cobwebs all over them. So what I did was take a spray bottle mixed with some water, vinegar, and soap. And I just wiped these down really good to get all of the dust and grime off of them. Next, I needed to paint them, so I took some Rust-Oleum aged gray chalk paint, which I thought was the easiest way to get some paint on these, and spray painted them with three coats of paint. So while the paint was drying on the shutters, I decided to make two small boxwood wreaths to hang on them. So I decided to take some clippings from my boxwood bushes that I have outside. Um, so this is totally free for me to do this. And I just took some green floral wire that I already had and then just kind of started layering the boxwood on top of each other and wrapping it in the floral wire and then just kind of playing around with it to get a circle shape out of it. Um, and then I did read some blogs where once these start to turn brown, you can just kind of spray paint them with some green spray paint and that will kind of keep, help them stay looking nice throughout the season. Um, of course, they're not going to last for forever because I didn't preserve them, but uh, this worked out for me. I just kind of filled in where it was missing some after I got it into a circle shape. And then I just hung them from the shutters with some Dollar Tree burlap ribbon. And these look so pretty. Okay, I saved the best makeover for last, or probably the one you've been waiting for the most for last. I'm gonna be doing the Kirkland's dupe with this picture frame from Goodwill that I picked up for $1.99. I believe this picture frame is an 11 by a 14. It had a nice wood frame to it, and I just removed the glass and set the glass aside, and I just threw away the backing because I didn't need it. Um, and now I'm just gonna paint the frame with three coats of the white linen Rust-Oleum chalk paint. 
After the paint was dry, I came back with some sandpaper and I just sanded the edges of the frame and the middle parts of the frame as well to give it that weathered look like the Kirkland's one had. So if you're gonna do this dupe, make sure you pick up a wood frame that you like the color of the wood because that is what's going to show through and make this look weathered. Now I'm gonna take the two hinges that I saved from the shutters and use those. Um, you could pick up a couple cheap hinges from Home Depot. That is where I got the handle from. It was $1.50. And now I'm going to go ahead and give all of this a coat of this matte black hammered spray paint. You could use whatever spray paint you would like. I just already had this. And then to give this a rusted and more weathered look like the Kirkland's one, I'm gonna use some ground cinnamon while the paint is still wet on the hardware and sprinkle that on and then just kind of layer it with the spray paint and the cinnamon until I get the look that I like. After the hardware was dry, I applied the hinges to the long side of the frame on the outer side, just with the screws that came with the hinges. It was super simple, I just lost the footage for that. Um, and then on the opposite side, in the middle of the frame, I just applied the handle. Okay, now it's time for the writing on the glass. So what I did was go into Adobe Illustrator and create um, the wording on there as close as I could get to the Kirkland's one and I've created a free printable for you guys I'll link that down below in the description box but I created it as a mirror effect so the words are backwards um, because I wanted my wording to be on the back of the glass and not the front of the glass when you put it in the frame if that makes sense um, so that way the front of the glass would just be easier to clean so what I did was just trace out the lettering onto the glass with a black paint pen and that was really it it was super simple to trace this out um, and then I just inserted the glass back into the frame and use my hot glue gun to secure the glass inside the frame you could use e6000 um, or any type of glue you'd like to secure it back into the frame so that way it holds and doesn't fall out but i really love how this dupe turned out and i think it's pretty close to the original one